Hey everybody. What's hey? Hey, what's going? Hey, what's going on? What's, what's happening? You what's what's going? What's hey? So we're at incel hobo communist cop. That's right. Just like all good cops. For the people, but also for me in my not house. And red pilled and based. You know why it's red pilled? Because of the communism. What they should call it communist pilled. I'm killing it. Hey, what's up, guys? Just a heads up. As Paige is out of the house, I am the only uh, person here to take care of the animals. So there might be a few more breaks than normal if some stupid, stupid idiot whines to go outside. Some stupid, stupid, stupid idiot that won't put... What are you do Zangief. Z don't look at me like that. Excuse me. How did you do this? How did you get that there? How did you do that? There you go. Just there. There it is. Somehow, he managed to entangle his favorite bone in the, the, the USB cable that is charging a switch controller. And when he went to go get his bone, he almost yanked the switch out of the TV thing. Also, hey. Here's here's an unprompted, not actually an ad, but it's actually a heads up. Hey. I get horribly disgusting dry feet. And it sucks, and they crack, and then the other day my feet cracked, and it bled, and it bled on the floor, and it was really bad and gross and painful. So... You should, you should probably put lotion on your feet. That's my advice. If your feet get gross. And... Oh man, I want to ban you so bad. Glug Zephyr. Quote, now nah, my feet are perfectly healthy and suckable. End quote. I hate it. I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. Oh well, I won't ban you though. But I mean, I just, I'm just saying, I just want you to know that that I'm upset. Uh, regular lotion wasn't cutting it. So if you want some super strong, super good lotion, get this cow lotion. It's called utterly smooth. It was invented for cows. No, no, not lotion made from cows. It was made for cows. Because, you know, they hook up the cow to the robot that, that sucks on their titties. That can get sore. So some guy was like, what if I, what if I made a lotion that could eat, that could, that could soothe even a, a cow's busted, busted titties. And he made this. And then later he was like... Wait a second, this works on humans. I should sell this to humans because cows can't buy lotion. It's true. So yeah, this actually helps a lot. There's only one problem. There's some kind of, what's in this? What's in this? Water, some kind of acid, glycerins, whatever. There's something in here that makes the dog want to eat my fucking foot. Speak of the devil. Hello. Hello. Thank you. High five. High five. That's a good boy. Oh, do you want this? Do you want to eat this entire thing? 
you cannot. You cannot eat that. That's got all sorts of shit in there. That will kill you for sure. Or at least make you throw up. Is that you? I love you. He's a good he's a good dog. Hey, by the way, I'm gonna love you now. Okay. Oh <laughs> he hates it. Alright. I woke up this morning thinking I was dying of a heart attack or some shit. But it turns out I had my own, what we're calling now, a sleep paralysis friend. Which is this big fat piece of shit sleeping across my chest like a bra or something. And I was like... <gasps> And then I pushed him off of me. He must have just flopped down there, because there's no way I would have fucking actually managed to sleep like that. And then I pushed him off, and then he fell asleep next to me. And I'm like, oh, that's much better. Thank you. Spank that dog. How's Geef dealing with Paige gone? He does not like it. He is occasionally throwing tantrums that don't go anywhere. He constantly wants to go outside. And do nothing. I think he thinks Paige is out there. Because, I mean, he saw her get into the car and leave. Um, he does not like it. When Paige comes back, I imagine the dog is going to flip his shit. Singu. You're fat. Elmo! Has been fine. Elmo just, he sleep, and he bug me, then he go poop, then he go eat, then he bug me again, then he yells at the dog, then he goes back to sleep. I mean, he's a cat. What are you doing? You look weird, buddy. So that's that. Oh, I'm licking my toes. You know when you wiggle your toes and there's lots of lotion on it, and it's like... It's like you're covered, like, like there's slime, but it's good slime. It's slime that's good for you. Healing, healing slime. Yeah. Healing slime. Is this a feed stream now? Now, no. I just, I'm just, I'm just hanging. I'm just, I. I'm back to living the single life. What does that mean? It means sitting around and putting lotion on my feet at the couch because Paige can't stop me from doing it at the couch because it's gross. It's just, ah, who's going to stop me? No one's going to stop me. She will find out. Yeah, what's she going to do? Burn her arms again? <laughs> Oh, man. How did she do that anyways? That's a secret. <sighs> That's not my story to tell. Regardless. Today we're going to be playing Disco Elysium. I'm so excited to also point out that Wooly Versus will also be playing Disco Elysium. So you should check that out to see what it's like. To play the game differently. Not better, god no, but differently. So, let's thank it to Peepo and get into Disco Elysium. This isn't Fortnite? Yeah, I know. We're playing Fortnite on Friday. Uh, I'm gonna ask Susie to drop by again if she's available. Uh... And if not, if not, if not, if not. And that's that. Alright. Let's thank the Peepo. The first Peepo to thank is Fitch Guy, who sub for 10. And by sub for 10, I mean kicked in 10. I am so good at this. Thanks, Fitch Guy. 
Holy Deviant kicked in 750. If you're still looking for games that are a little outside your wheelhouse, but might fit in with your new one. Co-op Astroneer, no. Banish, don't know what that is. Cogmine, don't know what that is. And I unironically Dwarf Fortress might suit you. I'm waiting for the Steam release of Dwarf Fortress because the Steam release of Dwarf Fortress will have graphics. One of my favorite things for a video game to include. Oh, Banished is on my ignored list. It takes a lot. It takes a lot for something to get onto my ignored list. All right. Well, that, we're gonna continue to ignore that. And then Cogmind, also known as Play FF11. Am I <sighs> Do you remember when I said it's fun for video games to include graphics? We're going to put the uh, Cogmind on the ignore one as well. Thank you for these recommendations. Nelson suffer 26 and Baron Von Jarvis suffer 21. Thank you. Mass Connect kicked in five bucks. Is what Pat thinks Star Trek looked like 20 years ago? Insert Picard image. What Star Trek actually looked like 20 years ago? Insert Scott Bakula. I actually don't know who that is. Who is Scott Bakula? Is that Enterprise? That is, in fact, Enterprise. What a stupid name. What a stupid, stupid name. Uh, let's see. I uh, Yeah. So, what Star Trek actually looked like 20 years ago was Voyager. Because Voyager ran from uh, 95 to 2002. Or 2001. It had 172 episodes, and I watched every single one of them multiple times. And uh, that show can go to hell. That's my review. Why all of them multiple times? Because it would be on, and I'd rather watch terrible Star Trek than almost anything else. Also, if, if Jerry Ryan was on the TV, I'd watch the TV if it had the Jerry Ryan on it. That's why I watched the first season of goddamn Boston Public. The weird school-based Ally McBeal thing. Man, that dog is a melted pizza out there. Hey, melted pizza. Yeah, I love you. Balls to you! Kicked in eight months. Thanks, balls to you. Hi, Pat. Decided to get an AIO water pump with my tax return. While trying to take out my old fans, I pulled on the front panel so hard that I tore my case wiring. So I had to buy a new case. But balls to you! It's so simple! Even a child can do it! The idea that you would actually damage your PC while changing parts around it's crazy. That can't happen. What are you talking about? It's not like there's actually a bunch of really fragile shit in your computer. And if you don't ground yourself properly, you can short some of it out, let alone tear it. What? Al Azul, sub for 19. Thanks, Al Azul. Na 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 19. Thanks for checking a look at this back in the day. Definitely sold me on this excellent game. Hope all is well. Pet babbies and love life. Will do. Will do, always. Pocket bur. What the? Pocket barrel? Illustrator? Pocket bear illustrator. That makes much more sense than pocket burl illustrator. 
I don't know why I read it that way the first time. Sub for three months, thanks, Pocket Bear. Forlorn Carton, sub for 16, thank you, Forlorn. Dead Man Props, sub for five, say big month anniversary or something, or something. Get a coffee? You're right. Thank you. Oh my god. Guys. His fucking fat face is so fat. He was like sleeping like this, but his cheek was like pushed out and it like rolled up past his head and he had like a cheek pillow of cheek fat. It's fucking disgusting. Disgusting dog. Yeah, no, I, I was I would take a picture, but like he totally like moved his head when I stood up. Hey bad boy. Sweet fat boy. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, hey, guys. We got a new coffee machine. There's no coffee in it right now. But do you want to hear how it sounds? Hopefully it's a little less loud than the other one. I'll, I'll go turn it on. There's no beans in it though. Like we set the we set the alarm on it like because it's a drip coffee machine so we can make a pot of coffee automatically so we set it to noon and if you don't wake up before noon it's just, oh fuck oh time for coffee <laughs> fuck shit all right. Emperor Dreads over 15 says, I'm playing through Disco again myself, so I won't be watching until I'm done my current playthrough. Hope you're enjoying this fabulous game. Failing has never been more fun. It's pretty great. Playthrough failure is always tough to do in a game. Uh, Baldur's Gate does it bad. Baldur's Gate 3 should take a lesson from Disco Elysium. In Baldur's Gate 3, when you fail a check, you just don't get the thing that you were trying to do. In Disco Elysium, when you fail a check... You get an awful version of the thing you were trying to do. <laughs> it's very much or better in some cases. All right. Copper Tucker kicked in 20 months. Thanks, Copper. Hey, Pat. Been a rough day, so I'm glad there's stream to watch. I finished 13 Sentinels over the weekend. And it is no joke that one of the best games I've ever played. Mira is the best boy. Have a good day. I have a thing that I want to talk about in 13 Sentinels. But I don't want to spoil 13 Sentinels. But I don't know where to put my thoughts. You know? Like, I don't know where to put my thoughts. Like, I can't put it on Twitter. I don't know where to put it on the podcast. You know? I, I do a mini thing. I, uh, I literally only have one thing to say about it. I'll bring it up later, but I won't be talking about Disco. I won't be talking about uh, 13 Sentinels. Shogun Nunto used 1,500 bits to say... I almost ripped my finger off. 
in a workplace accident. I only got three days off, so that's fun. Anyway, I can still beat the kids in Fortnite. Wow. Yeah, be careful. Losing a finger sucks. Unless it's your pinky. Your pinky can go to hell. Like, that's why the Yakuza are like, oh, I'll cut a finger off, and it's your pinky, and it's like, Pfft. We should just go, we should just all go no pinky. Just like when you get born, just cut this part off right here. Go full Wyvarian. Get the fucking Simpsons hands. Be good. Raffle Mag kicked in two years. Thanks, Raffle Mag. Hey, Pat. At first, I came to say something about playing Yakuza, but then caught completely sidetracked by the cow foot lotion. That's the kind of content we all came here for. That's true. Hey, I'm helping somebody. Somebody is going to put this this cow foot lotion on their feet. And um, then they're going to be like, oh, wow, that's a, lot, that's a lot better. My feet feel better. And that'll, that'll be my good deed for the day. Uh, Rise is way better with an Xbox Elite controller. Anyone interested to just look up an 8-bit dough? I don't know what that is, but, uh, you shouldn't play Switch games with Joy-Cons at all, ever. You should play Switch, con Switch games with the Pro Controller, which is a good controller. Kitchen Greg kicked in 500 bits. Pat, I'm recently getting through Captain Tsubasa on PS4. It's really solid and fun. Unexpected GRPG with social links and skill building with Holy Lord. I just got through a segment with 70 minutes of cutscenes before I saw another menu. I think my favorite one, and we're coming up on one soon, on April 4th. Uh, no. Uh, 12th? April 12th. Is, um... When you play Final Fantasy XIV, uh, in the expansion, and in the... 0.3 and 0.5 patches there is near universally a section that they uh, 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 you go to talk to somebody and you go to complete the quest and then a prompt comes up that goes a series of cutscenes will play in a series uh, please make sure that you have enough time to watch these it may be like a significant length of time and it is like 45 minutes to I think the longest one is like an hour and 5 minutes and it is like plot just like like bam the 2.55 one is uh the one where you go from a realm reborn to heaven's word and it's the first one of those and sets the stage for just how much better the storyline gets from a realm reborn to heaven's word because it's it's it is a full two or three points better on a review scale in terms of storyline it it goes from that's eh, nice little mmo story to yeah shit whoa D what that's crazy Oh, man. That shit's great. Don't, don't skip cutscenes. Don't skip Final Fantasy XIV cutscenes. Like... Okay. So... A while ago, I've talked about it before, Doc Squiddy put up a, a, a thread about emotional context, right? And that is basically, uh, why do you care about getting these random materials in Yakuza? Uh, Yakuza 7. Well, it's because it's to help an old man make a bookcase for a young boy, because when he was a young boy, his father was deadbeat and never got it. And... That side quest gives you this, like, wealth of emotional context 
for, hey, let's go get some, some, some spare wood and let's go get some old nails and we're gonna build this, build this bookshelf and then we're gonna, right? And it takes what is essentially a trivial series of meaningless tasks and gives it the weight and the impetus to actually complete it and then has like a like a real punch in the story because you were you actually involved yourself an mmo is one of the genres that is the most dependent on emotional context not necessarily in terms of its capital P plot storyline, but at the very least in its world building, world design, sense of place. Original World of Warcraft Classic had an astonishingly good sense of place. It really felt like you would just zoom down and you were hanging out in the locations from the RTS maps. FF14, however, goes instead for the capital P plot. And... The difference between fighting, fighting um, the difference between fighting the final boss of the Shadowbringers main scenario because it's a cool boss and you need to unlock it to get to the end game content versus fighting the final boss of the Shadowbringers scenario because it is the culmination of a, like, eight-year storyline is night and fucking day. It is absolutely night and day. And it genuinely hurts me when I see people, like, skipping all the stuff to get to the end and they're like, I'll just watch it later. Like, you are absolutely robbing yourself of all of the game's best moments because like in heaven's word fighting knights of the round is incredible but fighting knights of the round because those motherfuckers need to go because of that shit in the vault is transcendental When does the plot get good? I want to say level 40 or 45. It starts to get good, then it drags a little bit for the 2.1 to 2.3 series. And then from 2.4 onwards, it's fucking aces. And then Stormblood kind of sucks. But the Stormblood patch series is much better. But the, the easiest answer is after... After Titan. If you can get past Titan, which is really easy now... It's all uphill from there. Stormblood is fine. It's just it's not as good as Heaven's Word, and it's definitely not as good as Shadowbringers. Is that because Titan feels like a filler arc? Yep. All right. Hopefully that wasn't too long of a side thing. But yeah, no, genuinely. Um, you are robbing yourself if you are skipping cutscenes in 14. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with streaming 14. I really don't know. I don't think I'm going to stream the 5.5 MSQ. Uh, that's the end of a storyline that a lot of people don't know about. Next week, I am going to be streaming the, the near raid. But just the near raid. Um, but I'm talking about Endwalker. I'm talking about 6.0. When I did Shadowbringers, 
That took like 10 days, 11 days of just full streaming. And to be very blunt, views uh, were terrible. Uh, and I look back and I, I go and I, I get a little bitter because the number one thing I saw from people that I knew would watch it otherwise is, well, I got, I got into 14, uh, cause of your channel. So I didn't want to watch you play it. I had to go play it myself. I'm like, oh, mm, um, mm -hmm. I will probably do a launch day stream. But I don't know if I'll do anything after that. I look back and I think about the fact that it would be different if I had pulled, say, like what Jesse Cox pulled and streamed the entire thing from the beginning. But I didn't. Right? And so there's so much that you would have to catch up on. Stream leveling and alt? I'm never going to level an alt in that game. That's stupid. People who level alts are insane. You, know, I, I have a completely maxed out on every class character. I am not going to level an alt. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Now, what I will do before Endbringers, though, Endbringer and End Walker, is um, we'll do some streams where we go through, like, um, the, what do you call it, the new, um, uh, the new skills and stuff like that. Menden's up for 13. What do you think Willie and Reggie's reaction to Measurehead's going to be? Oh, well, the old, it'll be his favorite character in the game, for sure. James Cork, sub for 15. Hey, Pat, you and Yahtzee both sold me on this game, so I picked it up. Gotta support the little indie devs. Hey, now that you've finished all the Soulsborne's games, how would you rank them from less good to best? Dark Souls 1, Bloodborne, 3, Demon Souls, and Sekiro. Oh, and then 2. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> Damn. Galactic Latte sub for two years. Thank you. Ace Diamond sub for ten. Thank you. Misty Mountains kicked in five bucks. Thanks, Natalie. Blame you for my recent binge of Disco Elysium from beginning to end. Three days. Finished it in three days. That's good. Tiny Swamp thing kicked in 36 months. Hey, Pat. Finally able to catch the stream because it took some time off work. Grinding in her eyes and just taking my mind off work has made me the most relaxed since I started my new position. Good for you, man. Do you count Scholar and the OG as two different things? No. Um, Scholar is... Weird. Like, overall, it seems like an improvement. 
But there were so many times I'm like, man, this sucks compared to the original. But overall, I think it's an improvement. Uh, Hacks Metatron kicked in 10 bucks. Thanks, Hacks. Planescape Torment is one of my all-time favorite games, and I consider Disco Elysium to be the only other game that digs into that well. But I'm sad that Torment is rendered relic of the past due to all this quality of life, voice acting, etc. I wonder if it can be remade. It could be. It won't. <laughs> Muffled your beat suffered 37 to see what is the Zork stream, coward, little heart. Never. Raptor sub, thank you. Aztecs up for 27, thank you. Dalma kicked in 13 months. It's 1.5 years enough time before re recommending something. I don't know. Anyway, Manifold Garden is cool. Good photo mode, even if you hate it. You can have nice images from the other players. Manifold Garden. There it is. On. Okay. Let's take a look at what it is. That looks just like Antichamber. Why does it look just like Antichamber? Mm. I'll put it on the wish list. Let's see, Josh Man kicked in three months. Thanks, Josh. Not saying the universe has conspired against me to stop from playing Outriders, but finally got a few minutes to play yesterday afternoon. And the internet cuts out for half the United States. Coincidence? Anyway, here's some money. Yeah, I uh, haven't played any Outriders at all. Uh, the fucking thing runs like shit and then crashes on me. I was planning to stream it. Um, and uh, that's not going to happen because the game is a fucking mess. It's a bummer. No brev sub for 34, thank you. Ranryu kicked in five bucks. I added a liquid cooling system to my PC the other day. It took a few hours because I'm new to PC building, and NZXT's instructions are about as helpful as the catchy advice you got. Uh, but I was amazed the immediate improvement it made over just fans. I actually run fans in my PC. I don't run liquid because uh, I can't maintain a liquid PC. And last liquid PC I had had liquid problems. Uh, fans I can understand. Fans I can even personally replace, if need be. Also, my PC is way over there, and it's in a quiet case, so it's gonna be... gonna be big quiet. Why not AIO? Well, first things first, I don't know what that is. So, that answers that question quickly. The Great Scanardo kicked in 37 months. Let's give Disco. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. RNG Bob kicked in 30 months. Thanks, RNG Bob. Two and a half years. Is Fortnite Friday is going to be the new normal. Is there another candidate for Pat Stairs of the Bandwagon? Fortnite Fridays will continue right up until the view count ends up at 899 or less. And then we'll find something new. I mean, maybe that's a bit mercantile, but I, I'd prefer to be, like, straight up honest with you. And that is, if you guys, if, if, if a large proportion of my audience seems to like it, I'm going to do it. As long as I enjoy it. <laughs> if I don't enjoy it, I'm not going to do it. Uh, no Holds Barred Productions kicked in 13 months. But if I don't want the doctor to cut my pinky finger off when I'm born, Pat, what then? They put it back on. Just put it back on. Robot pinky. Arceal Lardor kicked in five bucks. Thanks, Arceal. Hey, Pat. Ended up with a glitch of the console version of Disco that I hope you don't encounter. Because I think it blow... blow, 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 blow McDonald's. Uh, because I think it broke my playthrough. Suffice to say, if you run into a game asset that appears to have been utterly removed or washed out, you'll know. Great. Uh, I hear that the console versions need a little extra work. Fenrir Sulfur V kicked in three months. I still don't know how to feel about getting hit with the moralist sorry cop in, by this game. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll go sorry cop one day. Is Disco getting a patch on um, PC today as well? 
Do you guys know? Disco Elysium patch. Ah! Ah, my eyes! Anyway. Uh, patch 1.2 is coming today for all platforms. Locations and interactables not working. Items not loading. Smoother controller experience. It needs it. Bad. Controller support sucks. Bruh. King of Twitch TV kicked in seven months. Says, hello, love the dog noise. Thank you. I love him. Blackbird sub for 32 and Mads Valentine sub. Thank you. Facto gifted a sub. Thank you. I lock sub for five. Disco Elysium is a masterpiece. It's a complete travesty that is banned in Australia. Well, suck it, Australia. You're all very attractive. So suck it. And fit. The poison out of the snake that bit me. <laughs> Wait. The poison out of the snake? That. Like, out of the. That's wrong. That's. That's bad. Get out of the kiln! Oh, man. Auntie Donna, I'm aware you just did a TV show. And, uh, you're probably tired. Please, please make more videos. Where's Will? Suffer 20. Thank you, Where. 20 months, that's crazy. Still been, been working out while watching your streams, making some good games. Also, this game rules. Thanks for showing it off. You're quite welcome. No, I can't do... Wait. No, Nacho... What? No. <sighs> this is gonna take... I'm gonna come back to this. Cozy kicked in five bucks. Thanks, Cozy. Hey, Pat, love the streams as always. Saw that Max streamed Outbreak a day or two ago, so I'm glad the game got some exposure. If they had to remake the game nowadays, what key thing would you uh, think is necessary to keep player retention? Thanks. Any form of in-game communication at all! In the original, you could get to that goddamn fucking university level, and somebody could pick up a key item, and just hang on to it, and you'd be, you had no way to talk to them, and be like, give me that fucking key item, and you'd be fucking stuck. Those games are great. I really wish they, they gave us a new outbreak. And Nacho Can Dandy Ravage sub. Thanks, Nacho Can. Big appreciate. All right. And with that, it's disco time. That's clearly the wrong layout. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I'm gonna ask you a favor. Uh, since the patch is supposedly coming out today, uh, what I would ask out of all of you is uh, that if the patch comes out while I'm streaming, let me know so that I can t turn the video game off and then get the patch. And then the game will be better. What patch? The patch for Disco Elysium. Did, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you hear that the sequel for this game by the writers say that they might go full foregoing and that you'll be playing as a pregnant detective? <gasps> Fargo. That's what you mean. Fargo. Oh, man. I want to take every drug in the world if I'm a pregnant detective. 
and then the baby can come out and the baby can be like all fucked up from the drugs but it can talk and it can tell the future and solve the case and then the baby die and you're like no baby and he's like it's okay we solved the case Blech. and then it melts I should be a writer I'm a good writer I'm a good writer. All right, let's go back to Martinez. Somebody pointed out that due to the extra time we have at the beginning, I'm now going to be able to uh, read the uh, case files if I want. Which I do! Body is not down. No sound? Sick. Give me one second. I swear to God, it's like I'm bad at my job here. That should do it. It's like I'm bad at my job. Fuck. I try really hard at this. I don't usually read donations during this, but I'm making an exception for this one. Mr. Unknown Alien kicked in $5. Just got COVID, so your streams are my highlight. Thanks for keeping it up, man. You take care of yourself. Everybody give the Mr. Unknown Alien their energy so they can beat the COVID. All right. Let's use our logic to read case files. Yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41, then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. For example, HDB41201177. The next world mural. How long's it? So Harry. I never got his last name, by the way. How long does it take to read a case? It takes about half an hour to piece one together using the system you've devised. Where do you want to start? I can revisit this. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. I'd like to read a case. It takes about half an oh, hour to I wanted to together using the system you've devised. Which one do you want? Hmm. Guys, can you uh can you give me one second? I'm having a PC issue here. And I'm back. Hello. Hopefully that, that fixed it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm having some kind of flickering issue. I guess it wasn't Kenshi after all. Alright, let's read about the next world mural. Oh, he's still got the face. Don't worry about it. This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural, appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking Central General. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Couron. Cause of failure, rent too high. That'll do it. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads, True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. Well, that went a little weird at the end there. People call it that thing, and 
That fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two <laughs> days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. The Graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the Bell Lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the Graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. Wait, do I ever find out who came up with it? The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options. Given a choice between two options, we should enable Twitch integration. That I think is broken. Crap. Did I break it? But, oh, it's too late. All right, let's just go with keep the mural. It is correct. I think murals are cool. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority. And that love truly is possible in the next world, for new people. And it is too late for us. There we go. Now I fixed it. That's right! All that remains is to wreak havoc on the middle class! Fuck them! In any case, it appears to have been a rare case of civil activity in the quarter. <laughs> and agreement as well. What do you want to tackle next? Why not? What about the unsolvable case? A.K.A. Leslie and Burke. A.K.A. The public indecency... Is that, is that sound a little bit better, guys? ...is a cursed case. It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for ten years. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in Jamrock, know it's unsolvable. Can't be solved. Leslie will always take his pants off when he's drunk. Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man. And you can't lock them away because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. The only way for Leslie to stop flashing his genitals to bypassers and for Burke to stop dismantling signage and rear-view mirrors would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which, in their 40s or 50s, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability on par with you ceasing to produce the expression. Couldn't we just keep them off the fucking street? You would think that, but you're wrong. Where's the fun in exposing your genitals or breaking stuff in your own home? No, Leslie and Burke are on the corner of Main Street and Perdition, because that's where the action is. Can you keep yourself off the streets? Fair enough, logic. Threatening, fines, dragging them to the station, locking them up in the hell holes they live in, locking them up in the station, hypnotherapy, even trying to get the local gang of Zemiaki to take them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol, so Burke and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all. 
and still the complaints wouldn't stop, as they hadn't stopped for 10 years. It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV, and Special Consultant TH, had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of Perdition. And what is Leslie doing? He's public indecencying. Good, you're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things, and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. The case becomes considerably less comic one day when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. Oh, you bitch. He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. You're drunk out of your mind on potent Pilsner. You slam the hardened plastic board in his face. Then you proceed to beat him unconscious with it. With a ledger? It's pretty brutal. In the process, the ledger sustains damage. The compartment within, reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. The officer began to cry, reports Leslie, who at this point is tending to Burke. Jesus Christ. He came at us and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. You've smashed it open on poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk anymore. This is a little less funny now. Can't get out of his apartment, an invalid, with Burke to tend to. Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows? But both drunks are off the street. The complaints oh. stop. The unsolvable case is solved. Oh man, Harry's the worst. Guys, I think I've discovered the true nature of Harry's problem. He's a cop. Which is also why the officer responsible narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. The end. Do you want to read another one? Yeah, square bullet hole murders. Let's do it. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks, on her rocking chair, with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. But? That's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you know is the entry wound was square-shaped. You never found the bullet. And then... Another body showed up, also with a square hole in his forehead. Sequence killer? Who knows? Those pages are missing. What next? Don't worry. One day. Thanks, Inland. One day you may still catch the man with the square gun. What about the couch? You're gonna run out of time to talk to Kim? Okay, Not let's reach his change. Thank you, the heads up monkey. Kim. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. Oh shit! I'm st ah oh, fuck! I'm still broke. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager any money for damages. You should take care of that, then. But I don't have any money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Though he finds this situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse than you already do. I love you, Kim. Let's kiss. Kim. 
Kiss kiss. Where'd you guys come from? Ooh, it's disco in here. I help you? I'm broke about money. Yes. Have you got it? No. Can, can we come to an arrangement? Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? I really want to pick this one because it's really funny. <laughs> it's... I'm losing the stupid money game. Oh. Hey, Kim's gonna say something. You should let Kim say something. I understand your predicament as the manager. However, I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking, and... I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. This isn't going anywhere, is it? Not until you bring me the money. Okay. I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant. We're done here. Goodbye. Hey, hold up. I gotta save the game. Uh, and I'll be right back. I gotta... The, the, I'm having that horrible flickering thing again, and I don't know what's causing it, and I need to try and see if I can change that. I'll be right back.
Yellow, I'm back. Hopefully that wasn't too long. I'm, I'm part of me is suspecting that it's Chrome that's doing doing it, but I'm not sure. Sorry guys, looks like we're gonna have to be uh, troubleshooting this issue. Might be G-Sync related. It's definitely possible. Oh wait, can I talk to Kim? Yes. No. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. Let's look in it. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. Uh, what? Do you mean you confiscate them? A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official's son and hi. Isn't that corruption, Ken? I don't know. Is it? I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. So what are they exactly? They are spinner hubcaps, frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. A vanity he wouldn't mind. Honestly, that sounds like an amazing physics demonstration. I mean, did you want to put these on your car, Kim? No, no, that, that would be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway, a cup with spinners. That would be outrageous. Outrageously fucking cool, Kim! He flashes a smile, barely visible in the dark. I'm sorry you have to sell them because of me, Kim. As I said, they are useless anyway. I should have remembered I have these earlier. But thank you. Thanks, Kim. I appreciate your help. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. Spinners. There were 200 bucks. 200 bucks! <laughs> Fuck yeah, let's buy some stupid shit! Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I'd like to buy that pin back. Yes. Fortunately, I still have it. 330 and it's yours. But I sold it for 320. Yes, you did, but this is how pawn shops make profit. So, do you want it or not? Yes. Here you go, officer. Anything else I can do for you today? I'd like to talk about my missing gun. Sure thing. Nothing. Sure, man. I'd like yes, to sell these we'll rims. to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 rael. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. Of course. I meant no offense. 200 rael for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you. Here's the 60 rael you need for your bill. Do not waste it. Um, oh, Those were too... The rest is for him. 
To compensate for the pain of being separated from his radiant spinners, the windfall is a small consolation. Anything else you're thinking of selling? No. Another time, perhaps. Okay, goodbye. I thought I was gonna get two hundred dollars. That's where my indignation's coming from. I thought he was gonna I thought he was gonna give me two hundred dollars. Would you trust a drunk with $200? Give, give me. Give me. Can I help you? I got the money. Yes. Have you got I it? Have your money. Well. I forgot to put the Twitch integration back in again. Oops. Yeah, it worked! Sorry for the trouble, guard. Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. More? He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. I'll unlock the electronic lock to your room. All the doors lock automatically at 9 p.m. Please pay for each night in advance, starting to 20, 20 oh! per night. I'll take a room here, too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? Goodbye. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. What is my copo type? Yes. Guess what's yours? Oh, this is really funny. This is really funny. Sorry, cop. I'm sorry. I'm not sure. Yes, sorry, cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official, then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. Okay, but what are the other copo types? Oh, you know. Apocalypse. Superstellar. The advanced interesting cop. Liquid shadow cop. But you're Liquid Shadow Cop! Things. So, here we go. Won't the other Copo types be jealous? What? Jealous of the sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual Copo type from sorry to anything. That's incredible. <sighs> I'm sorry. Of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this, like info. Or maybe every time you say you're sorry, you get a million bucks. That won't happen. Thanks, Logic. Minus one authority. Embarrassment to the party. You're one sorry piece of shit. A cop penitent, a flagellant cop monk. This is not the right line of work for you. You should be groveling at the feet of a feudal lord, providing lurid evidence against yourself at a Mazovian show trial. 
ripping the flesh from your back with a cat of nine tails. Whatever made you this way, you can be damn sure it was your own fault. Do it. Really criticize yourself. Who knows? You might uncover something of importance from your guilt-ridden past. We're gonna learn how to be a sorry communist hobo cop with our shit compressed! <laughs> Everybody wanted me to level up shivers. Should I level up shivers? Shivers is leveled. Yes? How do I do the talk with Kim? Tell me about the case again. What do you want to know? Can we go to the prelim? You mean like a brief? Do you want me to brief you again? No, we There's no reason to wing anything. If you didn't get the brief, that's okay. I did. Three days ago, the RCM emergency desk received a report about a security guard who was found during the I already time, read all this stuff. The victim had been stripped. Okay, then. Good. Go upstairs. Well, Kim Lee... I, I feel like I want to keep exploring. Will Kim just leave? Can, can I do the preliminary thing at the end of the day? Kim leaves and you open your door. C can I explore more? I'm, I'm confused. 2 a.m. then time stops progressing. Well, let's keep exploring then. Wait a second. Is Kuno around? We're going to bed. We're going to bed. To bed. Closed. So this would be Kim's room here. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. You had some questions earlier, I believe. And besides, we should discuss our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. Okay. I. Why am I still holding the flashlight? The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Where shall we begin? We should talk about the investigation, first and foremost. But I also remember you wanting to discuss the RCM. I know you smoke, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, 
He looked so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. How'd you get so cool, Cam? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. I'm thinking about taking up smoking. Do you have more cigarettes? I apologize, but I only brought one with me. I have exactly one cigarette every night while going over my notes. That's pretty fucking crazy. All right, let's debrief. Yes, it's been a long and eventful day. How do you think today went? Well, you were so hungover that you couldn't keep it down when we approached the hangman. So we didn't even inspect the body. I tried. But we performed a thorough search of the premises of the crime scene. That's great. Though you really dropped the ball on inspecting the body, <laughs> you didn't want you to feel too discouraged. Probably out of fear that you would just give up and keep drinking. Don't worry, Kim. I'll totally be up for inspecting the body tomorrow. I look forward to that. As for the interviews, we weren't able to find the union leader, Evra Claire, much less interview him. So that's on the to-do list for tomorrow. We didn't talk to the Wild Man's rep. We really must do that tomorrow. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Precinct 41 practice? Yeah, it's the Jamrock Shuffle, man. It's impressive, especially for a man your age. And in those hands. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. Oh. So what are our powers exactly? They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Ravachon Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Wouldn't that be an easy power to abuse? Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. So why not more than a thousand? The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of Ravasho. What else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station closely. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. How do we know they're going to show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. That's an interesting way to do it! If you don't show up to be arrested, your trial will go worse. Now, it doesn't, like, stop them from fleeing the country, but that is interesting. And if somebody resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in the watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. So what happens if I kill somebody on duty? You have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, which is for the best. So what happens to people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Proven and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. So who makes all the rules? The coalition government and the moral intern, more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government formed in the RCM. Let's say it was the goddamn citizenry! The fucking proletari proletariat got people. Be sentimental if you like. Either way, 
The Moralinton leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. Or if they think you do. So what's the Moral Intern? What the fuck is that? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. Alright, so if I didn't know who they were, they would be... They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the Real Belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. When Wooly, you, when Wooly said what you can't be enlightened on the podcast, I almost vomited. What do they believe in? I bet they believe in nothing. What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence, Dolores. That is not what I thought ago. he was going to say. Others say they are just technocrats. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores Day. Uh, what's their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. I might as well be playing the fucking Antichrist by those rules. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something ominous. Who was Dolores Day? A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. What do you think of them? The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. Uh, do you like him? Yes, I did, when I was younger. In my twenties, I considered myself a moralist. A blue forget-me-not, a piece of the sky. They're not all that bad. Huh. That's another lay motif associated with moralism. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. I have an opinion on the moral intern. Do you? Oh, man. This is, this is the whole gamut right here. Like, I, I would, like, applaud Wooly's playthrough if he just went fucking number four on every single thing. Just fucking complete, like, right-wing fascist asshole. <laughs> we are stooges of the world's biggest bourgeois organization protecting the fucking bourgeoisie! No, we are stooges of the world's biggest bourgeois organization protecting the people of Revachol. Oh, god That's damn it, I love him so that. much. Without the MI, we would be common vigilantes. Yeah. Maybe we should make our own law. Spoken like a revolutionary, not a cop. Yeah! But hypothetical aside, in Martinez we already are vigilantes. At least the Union thinks so. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. Let's just look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in land, in Jamrock, in the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the Union, to the company. Not daring to come here more often. This place has fallen between the cracks. The jurisdictions of our two precincts. We run this city. 
West of the river is RCM land. I love you, Cam. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. I hope we can do some good here. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. Thank you, Kim. I love you. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. And... Sell that, get that lady her pen back. Oh, no. I can give her a pin back tomorrow, I guess. I can't sing, I don't have anything to sing. See you in the morning. Yes. Bye. All right, let's save the game. And apologies, guys. I think I might have to restart the computer. It's getting real fucky on me right now. Uh, let, or you know what? Let me try something else. I'll be right back.
Hey guys, we're back. Uh, to VOD viewers, I hope I've cut this up so that it's not too annoying for y'all. Guys, I'd like to really apologize. Uh, for some reason, I've got this weird flickering thing uh, when playing PC games and streaming only. Uh, I've turned the TV off. That didn't work. Uh, I, di I just turned off... Um, what do you call it? Uh, actual multiple monitor and uh, wallpaper engine. Hopefully that helps. Failing that, I'll hit it with a restart. Uh, I don't. I just. I'm very frustrated. I'm very sorry. Now that uh, we're by ourselves, though, let's go give drugs to that kid. Yeah, Kim won't know about this. It's fine. I'll just give the kid some drugs. And, uh, it'll be fine. Have you come to make your offer and to Kuno? Would you like the drugs, please? Oh, not this dreamer shit again. Why do Kuno's bitches always try and bring Kuno that lame sha -la, la la bang shit? Kuno's not a fucking witch, Doctor. It was only once. And you fucking asked me to nick it, Kuno. No, I didn't. It's fucking Kuno. Say it right, bitch. Say it like it's said. Kuno. That's an Oranese name. Anyway, Kuno doesn't do that radioactive shit. Makes Kuno's dick fall off. Kuno's got a huge dick. Well, I tried. Fine. Fuck it. Let's just read case notes. You little fucking asshole. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. It takes about half an hour to piece one together. Oh, using the system Let's talk about the couch in an unexpected location. Some assholes brought their couch outside and hung out on it. In the middle of the street, on the roof, on the hillside by the motorway. You know, at an unexpected location. They were young, and they thought they looked cool on it. Oh, I know this exact thing. They, so they, they look like fucking assholes. Insufferable dicks. Young people are the worst. So anyway, you gotta complain about the damn sofa, or couch, or whatever the fuck it was. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations. They took it, too, where they also took photos of themselves on it, and smoked cigarettes. Because they felt it's intellectual. I knew these people. I knew these people in college. I knew them. Cigarette butts, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up. And you did. So congratulations to you. Case solved. Did I ever catch those motherfuckers? No. You didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real goddamn job. You don't have time to be chasing down the couch assholes. You have a real job to do. What next? Let's go to the murder at a hookah parlor. Murder. Tum tum tum. At the hookah parlor. Was a case originally assigned to an officer called Joseph Mills, who is now dead. Of circumstances completely unconnected to murder at the hookah parlor. How'd he die? Beaten to death by a throng of Villa Lobos gang members when him and his partner, J.M., only initials mentioned, answered the call one night. That's fucked up. It's a sad story, and it isn't really represented in your case files. Stop stalling and get to the murder at the hookah parlor. Right, on with the murder. Joseph Mills was on this case that he just couldn't solve. Was doing it solo. Said it was a real nutcracker, a real brain twister. Was on it for, like, a month. The captain got impatient. Shit or get off the pot, Mills. 
Mills didn't get off the pot. Not yet. He kept at it for a couple of weeks more, racking his brains, running with every theory as outlandish as they seemed. Still couldn't solve the murder at the Uka parlor. Tough case, he said. Toughest he's ever had. Was he a good cop? No. He was awful. Awful sense of humor, too. The worst jokes you've ever heard. Really rapey. Still, oh, he'd that been on guy. It for months now. Said it was the final case. Said it BRT. was uncrackable. That murderer vanished into thin air. That goddamn hookah parlor was all he talked about. <sighs> King Regals asks, so does Brett Assassin and Garbage Queen Ellie. What's BRT? This is not my story, by the way. This is Wooly's story. It comes from his time at IDOS. Uh, he's told it on the podcast before. Uh, have you seen... Has anyone seen the movie Predators? Uh, that stars the... The That 70s Show kid? What's his name? Uh, yeah, the one with Adrian Brody, but the, we're talking about the, 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 the Toby, Toby McGuire, is that his name? Toe for Grace, Toe for Grace, Toe for Grace is in it. And he's like the serial killer guy. And there's the redneck, right? And the redneck, he's from jail, and he, and when he's, uh, when he's talking, he's talking to Toe for Grace. And, uh, and he goes, oh man, when I get out of here... Oh man, I'm gonna rape so many bitches, you know? Oh man, oh, oh, I'm gonna rape a bitch, ah, oh, and, and then Gopher Trace looks at him and he goes, oh, yeah, uh, uh-huh, yeah, bitch, bitch raping time, that's right. So that's the context you need from the movie. Um, fast forward a couple years to Idos Montreal. Where some fucking new hire, uh, something like cool happened at the at the office. I forget what the fuck it was. You'll have to ask Willie for for uh, clarification. Like some a good thing happened, like something like overtime maybe. I don't know. Um, and this fucking new hire just jumps up and yells out to the floor, "Hell yeah, it's bitch raping time!" Apropos of, like, fucking nothing. And, like, just everyone's heads just creak and turn and stare. If I remember correctly, he did not last. Black Leaf, that is the funniest shit. I wish I said it. Black Leaf X points out, shame he didn't work at Ubisoft. He would have gotten a promotion. Oh. That's a that's a that's good for you. All right, so yeah, that's BRT. That's, like... <sighs> anyway, off of the aside, go on. Okay, so the case is handed to you because Mills isn't getting anywhere, and you look into it. Here's the setup. A young man is found dead in a hookah parlor. You know, those places where you go and smoke bubblegum flavored vapor all day. Yeah, we call them shisha places out here. Uh, there's a lot of shisha uh, bars out here, actually. There's a lot because uh, Montreal has a very significant Lebanese population. 
And there's so there's a lot of shisha parlors. I fucking hate them. They make me so sick. They make me so sick. Like I would I would go to these places and every time like cuz all my friends wanted to go uh and I would like I'd be having fun and then the people around me would do the shisha thing and I would get so fucking sick. I would like I would get like a vicious vicious migraine. The kind of migraine that's like I'm going to throw up. Like I like I'll never understand. It's just t tobacco smoke. Yeah. It's also a bunch of incense and scents and perfumes and I have a very severe perfume allergy. So it makes me horribly, horribly ill. <laughs> it's like, I don't, want, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you, ever, you ever walk into that uh, friend of yours' house when, when you were in high school? The, 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 the had the mom that just decided to slap a fucking Glade plug-in into every free outlet? And it felt like you were, like, even people who don't have perfume allergy are just like, Ugh. Ugh. You know? Like, holy shit, man. Your house smells like the inside of a fucking urinal because of this shit. It's really stupid. Yeah. So anyway, young man in his twenties found with his skull busted open, right on the floor of the hookah parlor, in the middle of the day. No one else is in there, only client that day, in perfect health too. Some kind of movie producer. No one enters, no one exits. He's just sucking on his watermelon hookah all morning, all noon, like he usually does. He's a regular. No calls, nothing. Just sucking on the hookah until 1545. Then bam, he's dead on the floor with his skull busted open. Blood everywhere. What happened? How can it be? Mills has no idea. Invisible assassin. Movie deal gone sour. Girl at the counter did it. Nothing fits. Eerie. Man just dropped dead. So you go to the parlor. You see cushions around the table. Tables low, heavy, really sharp edge. So he sucked the hookah, he stood up, passed out, hit his head on the table? See? You can't even read the thing without solving it. Yeah, it was that. Turns out hookah does do something. It turns off your brain's oxygen supply. And you don't notice it until you get up to go to the bathroom. He must have sucked a lot of hookah. Yeah. He liked his hookah. Steven was his name. What the fuck's he doing there for six hours? Smoking hookah. Didn't you hear? I don't know. Trying to come up with a movie script, maybe. Anyway, that was Murder at the Hookah Parlor. Joseph Mills wasn't a good detective, and about 30 minutes has passed piecing it together. Next. Well, he is quite a terrible detective, isn't he? Alright. We did it. Not much has changed. Let's see if we can't find some more fucking bottles or some shit. Nah, you know what? We only have 45 minutes to go. Let's just go to sleep. There's no penalty to staying up. Yeah, but what if... What if... Kim... What, what if I need... What if I want to talk to somebody... And Kim's not there? 
Well, many cameras there raise the sea, indifferent to your approach. Most NPCs have gone to bed. Belly of the boat shines like it was recently painted. Oh! This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Why am I looking at this fucking wall? You have no clue. It's just a wall. So many walls all over Martinez, weather worn, cracked, their paint peeling. Thanks, Shivers. Ooh. Hey, Kuno S. Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep. Yes! Logic error. She is not sleeping right now. Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. Are you sleeping right now? Don't get fucking clever with me, pig. You think you're so clever. I'm pretty fucking clever. Trying to sneak up on me. All right. Garden house won't be any use until the snow melts. Chairs and tables eaten by rain and rot. Another splattering of bullet holes on the wall. I'm not allowed to look at that. We got an orange bum hat and some nose of fed. Let's take a look at the orange bum hat. Orange bomb hat will give me a plus one reaction speed, but minus one to rhetoric. My rhetoric's already pretty good, I think. Man, I have no authority at all, huh? Rhetoric's a four, what's uh speed of two? Alright. Let's hobo it up. Fuck yeah, I'm a bum. Why am I not wearing my fucking shirt? Alright. Just a closed door, but I'll look at it suspiciously. These barrels are half full of rainwater. Can't open it. All right. My well, this dog is looking like a creepy so like right next to me. I don't know if you could like he's just standing there on the corner of the, the couch going, eh, like a weirdo. Rue de saint Gislaine, roundabout north. By the way, that's how you say that. saint Gislaine. Cape Side Apartments. Hey, up here, Pico. Motorcycle repair. Girl up there, did she spill this paint? The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. You're pretty cool. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. I just want to know your name, little lady. No need to get defensive. And here I was trying to be polite. Just can't win with you pigs. Do you know anything about murder? I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. What is it, buddy? What are you doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. 
I'm waiting for the right words. Don't know what to write. Have you ever tried your hand at graffiti? Oh, when faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff like pigs go home and Mona was here. We rarely see pigs round here, though. Just union cats. And my name's not Mona, so. Yeah. She wants it to be something true and total. Why are you so committed to facing the building? This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up. You know, summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. I have an opinion on this. Yeah? I like art. You should you should keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. You've lessened her desire to deface the building. Oh. Keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? She nods disdainfully toward the woman performing maintenance on the boat docked next to the pier. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago two days travel away from Rivershot. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Who is she? Isn't it part of your job to know all the illustrious personages round this shithole? She's the Wild Pines representative. Madam, professional, negotiator in the flesh, and the flimsy linen. Her eyes narrow to slits. Something morbid about old ladies trying to look young. I have to agree. That's rich coming from a young girl dressed up like a granny. Aren't you a young lady trying to look old? Oh, but that's the way it should be. The natural order of things. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, Ungulate. You've got eyes on you. Jeez. It's raw. I'm not going to talk to that lady without, um, Kim. She's part of the case, I bet. Looks like there was more construction here decades ago. Those are residents. Room in the world in Whirling Rag isn't much bigger than this. This is worth more than you'll ever earn in your whole life. Gee, some magnesium. A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. Let's knock! The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. Let's knock again. The door rattles again. But this time, you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. Who am I speaking to? Doesn't matter who I am. Now go on, get out of here. This is the police. <laughs> the police? Everyone knows the police don't come around here. Please let me inside, it's very cold. No, I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Backyard door? There must be another entrance to the east. Alright, thanks lady. Oh, buddy, you enjoying your big stretch? You avoid- NO! NO! DON'T DO IT! I DIDN'T MEAN TO CLICK THAT! Eh, we'll live.
Well, you didn't buff me. You fucking took a point out of my intellect. Fuck. God damn it. Oh, the kid's gone. It's back to normal now? What that does? We're going to use that to get the body down tomorrow. Can I go into free? What is this? Some chain? 25 cents? Yeah! Lori's store fuel here. Now they store food. 60 cents?! Fuck yeah! We gotta save the game because we got 60 cents. Dollar thirty, fuck yeah. Human ox, that's odd. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing towards the sea. Looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A sliver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Felipe III, the Squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachal, son of Philippe II, the Opulent, father of Philippe IV, the Insane. Even by the standards of the yeah, Philippian yeah. kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. What way? Well... He blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Revachol. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. How did he blow through an entire treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, oh. armor, and various chalices. <laughs> Hello. Hello, fat boy. I got you. I got you. You were too slow. You were too slow. <laughs> he was too slow. Oh, 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 we so bad. Oh. <laughs> okay, bye. I love you. Ah. <sighs> I love that dog. Love you. You're a good boy. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold dipped feathers, like some obese dragon instead of a bed, like a normal person. That's pretty fucking crazy. The man certainly knew how to live! A deplorable farce. No wonder everything went to shit. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. The what now? You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury. 
on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. So he's addicted to nose candy, so boy, he's a bloated druggie? That's what the revolutionary said 150 years later. Right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. That's fucking so metal. What is nose candy? Cocaine. That's a lot to process. His Majesty's courtiers said it helped him connect with the higher realms. So where is he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. What about the statue? The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution when Martinez was leveled. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces. So who restored the monument? Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Rivershaw in the poorest part of the city. People in Martinez tend to disagree, oh. as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young Irish. That skipped forward, sorry guys. Philip III, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. Like, it's like going to the shittiest, poorest part of Paris and putting up a fucking giant statue of Marie Antoinette. Ooh! A white tank top that gives me physical instrument! Fuck yeah! The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... Are you my grandma? Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is gray like lead. Ma'am, can I ask you a question? No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Where am I? Who are you? The smile on her face has disappeared, replaced by the weary aspect of a cornered beast. I was hoping you could tell me that. Uh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. What's so bad about the 50s? The men have these small jewels and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? Where else would you be then? Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution. The side walls and cafes are filled with the young people. I was on my way to see a new Boyadero picture starring Gabriel Buendero. Until you came along, that is. Who's Gabriel Buendero? This is Gabriel Buendero. Let's take a look. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick. And his jaw, the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. This man's got a hold over her. Even 50 years later, you can feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen. And schoolboys used to memorize all of his lines. So I take it you were in mask when you were young? Someone was. Someone? Are these not your memories? They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? 
They are beautiful. That is all that matters. Beautiful and true. And they will win. What? They are coming for this, you know? All of this. She seems to derive some bitter pleasure from this strange thought. As if the past will one day wipe the present away. Like a tidal wave approaching. Sorry to interrupt your dreaming, ma'am. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, Loman. It was early spring, and the man behind the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. While you, people, were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution, in Mesk, it was a golden age. The Republic of Mesk is a massive confederation on the Isola of Muindi, the world's largest state by territory. It's a petro-state, a constitutional monarchy, and, as of recently, an outcast due to its tilt to the far right. I have some other questions for you. Police questions. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. There's something off about this woman. Tell her to show you the soles of her boots. Maybe she was at the hanging somehow. Can I see the soles of your boots? Now what do you want with an old woman's boots, Harif? Please, help me out here. It's very important. Please? I think you should let me get back to Gabriel Buenguerro. You are not Gabriel. Gabriel doesn't say please. She's wearing sturdy worker's boots made of black leather. Buckles run across. The sole is also made of leather. Yeah, now the other one, please. Just before Gabriel, it was the coronation of Franco Negro. Now, there was a real man. No aberration in the pattern. Moreover, the boots were size 37. Tiny. There are too many discrepancies in all this. Another discrepancy, although not boot related, is the coronation of His Innocence Franco Negro, which happened. 500 years ago. What do you mean it was the coronation of Franco Negro? It was. And then it was no more. And I was no longer holding my father's hand. He was no longer descending the stairs in Ryle. The crowd had gone silent. Perhaps it was another Herife who came and woke me up, looking at my boots, asking questions. Or uh, perhaps it was one of the others in this carnival. I don't remember. As she says, Carnival, she gestures to the empty square with the statue and the machines. These are not the boots I'm looking for. The feet of a little girl, they fit well on the pedals. What are you hauling? Diamonds. Really? Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Okay, but what are you really hauling? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. You know what you're you don't know what you're hauling in your own lorry? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. What's well, the cargo's contraband? Then it's contraband, Loman. What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad hand, Hermenegildo. Bad hand? Hermenegildos' bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. Damn. Still don't understand this whole Boadero thing. Of course not. To truly understand the Boyadero, you need to listen to on the Western Plain. The Boyadero, Boya for short, is a cow herder from upstream Magritte. The great steppes of northern Mesk. He is a rugged individualist and explorer. All right, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the Western Plain. I guess that doesn't happen. Of course not. The boyadero returns from the Western Plain a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Madrid, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. In the background, you can hear the orchestra swell as the screen fills 
with the maiden's imploring eyes. I think I see where this is going. So the boy Adairo strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magritte. Then he rides off because the Western plane is calling to him. That is not where I thought that was going. You have to understand. A true Boyadero needs a whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a Boyadero. What if to truly love a Boyadero is to float lifeless downstream? Seemed kind of out of it when I showed up. What do you mean? Dream, inactive, turned off. Yes? What about it? Did you drive a lorry like that? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best camioners around. I drive routes no one else will. What routes? Lomonosov's land, Udashnaya Zemlia, the Western Plain, the Transcatalia Magistral, you for one A, Adestrada's Dumera, all the good ones, the deep trenches, where the bluebirds fly. Excuse me. Cool. Ride until you're dust, sister. Irma, I already am dust. Thank you. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesky. Oh, I couldn't move there for a second. Okay, it's a strike. Press button behind the guard. Radically sealed door. No lock picking or door kicking this one. Industrial Harbor. That guy looks big. We're gonna leave him alone. No, we're not. We're gonna save the game. And I'm gonna take the dog out because he needs to pee. Excuse me, guys. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna start the whole stream over and restart the computer. Uh, it's still doing that shit. I genuinely don't know what's going on. I'm kind of worried. Um, so I'll be back in five minutes after restarting the computer, uh, ten minutes after restarting the computer and taking the dog out. So I'll be back relatively shortly. Bye for now.